If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. We know, based on the photoelectric effect, that when a metal surface is subjected to photons, then electrons from that metal can possibly be ejected. And there is an equation that relates the kinetic energy of those ejected electrons to the energy of the photons that are striking the metal surface and also a quantity known as the work function. Now it's going to be useful to replace the kinetic energy with the expression one half times the mass times the velocity squared. And it's also going to be helpful to make a substitution for frequency. We know that the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength of the light. If we divide both sides of that equation by wavelength, we could see that the speed of light divided by the wavelength is equal to the frequency. So we're going to replace frequency with the expression speed of light divided by wavelength. Now we have the velocity v marked here and it turns out there's actually two velocities going on or, or rather two speeds we can say. One is when the wavelength is simply lambda and in that situation the fastest emitted electron has a speed of v. Why don't we go ahead and call that speed v1 and in that case we're using a wavelength of just lambda. But then the wavelength is changed to 3 fourths lambda and we're going to have a new speed. So we'll rewrite the equation, but we'll call the new speed v2. And the new vo wavelength is going to be 3 lambda over 4. Now we can simplify this complex fraction by moving the 4 up to the numerator. And in fact, why don't we rewrite the right side of the blue equation just a little bit. Let's write it as 4 thirds times the quantity hc over lambda. It's just a little bit of rewriting, but we're going to find that to be useful. Now let's go back to the black equation for just a second. What we'll do is actually add the work function over to the left-hand side of that equation. And by doing that, we can see that the quantity hc over lambda is equal to this expression right here. Remember, we had offset an hc over lambda in our blue equation, so we're going to substitute hc over lambda with this expression in the brackets. Now because the question is asking for the speed of the fastest emitted electron in the second case here, we want to try to solve this equation for v2. And perhaps to do that we can first distribute the 4 thirds. We can then combine the like terms. We have 4 thirds times the work function and then minus the work function. We could multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and then divide both sides of the equation by the mass m, and then finally take the square root of both sides. So we've successfully solved for v2. Let's just for a moment assume that the work function is 0. and In fact it's not, it's a non-zero value, but let's just do that just to see a certain relationship here. So. If we imagine this to be 0, then this entire term would knock away, and so we would have the square root of 4 thirds v1 squared. Remember, we can rewrite that as 4 thirds v1 squared all raised to the power of 1 half. And that can further be simplified by writing it as 4 thirds to the power of 1 half times v1. So if the work function were 0, then the velocity in the second case, or the speed in the second case, would be exactly equal to this quantity right here. But of course the work function is not zero. It's a quantity that's actually larger than zero. And because that quantity right here will be larger than zero, that means that v2 isn't equal to this expression, but is actually going to be greater than this expression right here. And so the correct answer to the question must be choice one. Now if that was a little confusing, perhaps we can do a little simulation here. Let's imagine that v2 was equal to the square root of 9 plus 16. Now if we 
assume for a moment that the 16 actually goes to 0, then we would be left with the square root of 9, which of course is 3. So in that case, we would say that v2 is equal to 3. But that's assuming that this quantity of 16 was 0. Now, of course, it wasn't 0. It was 16. So when we properly solve for v2, we would have the square root of 25, which of course is 5. This is the correct value of v2 in this simulation. So in fact, v2 is not equal to 3, but it would be equal to something that is greater than 3. So that's pretty much an analogous case for what we had discussed down here. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments. But the correct answer must be that v2 is greater than this quantity right here, because this work function underneath the radical was not zero. It was a quantity that was actually greater than zero. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. You can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.